Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. This video was brought to you by audible.com. The link is in the description box and I'll tell you more about that later, but for now, let's get into the video. Smooth pale roots as white as bone, blood red leaves like hands and life it's known. The red sap cries blood tears through solemn faces. Thousands of years it watches waiting. Undisturbed they say it will live forever. The trees don't talk, but the trees remember. In the very beginning of our story, we are introduced to the old gods, the weirwood trees with pale white trunks and red five-point leaves that look like hands. The children of the forest carved faces into these trees before man had ever arrived to Westeros. The sacred trees are the gods of the first men and the gods of the children of the forest. The first men adapted the trees as their gods a long time ago. The Dothraki believe everything of importance must be done under the stars. But for the first men, they hold the trees in the same regards. Everything of importance must be done in front of the trees. A traditional northern marriage is done in the God's Wood in front of the Weirwood. An oath is sworn in front of the Weirwood. Prayers are heard in front of the Weirwood. The magic is so strong and old that lives within the weirwood that it dates back before the dawn of time. But are the weirwoods evil? Demonic even? Are they just neutral observers that only watch and remember? Or are they alive with the souls of dead from thousands of years past? The weirwood trees were cut down long ago in the south, but the north remembers. In the south, the last weirwoods had been cut down or burned out a thousand years ago, except on the Isle of Faces where the green men kept their silent watch. Up here, it was different. Here, every castle had its godswood, and every godswood had its heart tree, and every heart tree its face. There has been much talk about the Isle of Faces lately, the sacred island shrouded in mist and mystery. The isle that contains a grove of pale white weirwoods whose roots have been undisturbed for thousands of years. It was on this isle that the pact was made between the first men and the children of the forest. It was also on this isle where the children used the darkest magic they could conjure to break the arm of dawn. Finally, driven by desperation, the little people turned to sorcery and beseeched their green seers to the stem the tide of these invaders. And so they did, gathering in their hundreds, some say on the Isle of Faces, and calling on their old gods with song and prayer and grisly sacrifice. A thousand captive men were fed to the weirwood, one version of the tale goes, whilst another claims the children used the blood of their own young. And the old gods stirred, and the giants awoke in the earth, and all of Westeros shook and trembled. Great cracks appeared in the earth and hills and the mountains collapsed and were swallowed up and then the seas came rushing in and the arm of dawn was broken and shattered by the force of the water until only a few bare rocky islands remained above the waves. The summer sea joined the narrow sea and the bridge between Essos and Westeros vanished for all time. This isn't the first time we have heard of blood sacrifices to the trees or feeding the trees. In A Dance with Dragons, Bran sees a captive killed by a woman with white hair and a bronze sickle. When the man is killed, Bran tastes his blood inside the tree. When the first men used to kill traitors and criminals, their bodies and entrails were hung on the weirwoods. In Skagos, it is rumored that the stoneborn will sacrifice men to the weirwood, kill them, and feed the tree with blood. The Andals, who worship the faith of the Seven, thought the Weirwoods and the children of the forest to be nothing but demons. And they treated them as such, chopping their trees down with steel or burning them with fire. The great hill called High Heart was especially holy to the First Men, as it had been to the children of the forest before them. Crowned by a grove of giant weirwoods, ancient as any that had been seen in the Seven Kingdoms, High Heart was still the abode of the children and their green seers. When the Andal King Arag the Kinslayer surrounded the hill, the children emerged to defend it, 
calling down clouds of ravens and armies of wolves, or so the legend tells us. Yet neither tooth nor talon was a match for the steel axes of the Andals who slaughtered the green seers, the beast, and the first men alike, and raised beside the high heart a hill of corpses half again as high. Or so the singers would have us believe. Today only stumps remain where once the weirwood stood, but when the roots remain does the magic as well. Quite possibly. The roots are deep, and even while Jamie sleeps with his head on a weirwood stump, long dead, the old gods are still able to send him dreams. In A Dance with Dragons, Bran is fed weirwood pace. For the next step, for you to go beyond skin changing and learn what it means to be a green seer. The trees will teach him, said Leaf. She beckoned, and another of the singers padded forward, the white-haired one that Mira had named Snowy Locks. She had a weirwood bowl in her hands, carved with a dozen faces, like the ones the heart trees wore. Inside was a white paste, thick and heavy with dark red veins running through it. Something about the look of it made Bran feel ill. The red veins were only weirwood sap, he supposed, but in the torchlight they looked remarkably like blood. He dipped the spoon into the paste and hesitated. Will this make me a grain seer? Your blood makes you a grain seer. This will help awaken your gifts and wedge you to the trees. What is actually inside of the weirwood paste has been up for debate for a while now. Almost everyone assumes there's blood in it and possibly Jojen's blood or possibly Jojen's body. Green seers are clearly made stronger by blood and blood sacrifice. When they broke the arm of Dorne, they are said to have sacrificed a thousand men. That blood sacrifice allowed them to cast their spells and draw in the tides. When Bran describes the cave under the weirwood, it is a cave of a thousand bones. The caves were timeless, vast, silent. They were home to more than three score living singers and the bones of a thousand dead, and extended far below the hollow hill. As Hodor, he explored the caves. He found chambers full of bones, shafts that plunged deep into the earth, a place where the skeleton of gigantic bats hung upside down from the ceiling. He even crossed the slender stone bridge that arched over the abyss and discovered more passages and chambers on the far side. One was full of singers, enthroned like Brendan in nests of weirwood roots that wove under and through and around their bodies. Most of them looked dead to him, but as he crossed in front of them, their eyes would open and follow the light of his torch. And one of them opened and closed a wrinkled mouth as if it were trying to speak. When the children die, they go into the tree. Their blood and body becomes the tree. When Bran eats the weirwood paste, it is to make his powers stronger. There is undoubtedly blood in the paste, whether the children tell him the truth of it or not. When Yara or Asha and the Ironborn are being attacked by Stannis, she recalls a tale. The woods were on the move, creeping toward the castle like a slow green tide. She thought back to a tale she had heard as a child about the children of the forest and their battles with the first men, when the green seers turned the trees to warriors. The trees are vessels for the green seers. Prayers are prayed not to the gods, but the green seers, and it is blood they need to remain strong. Blood sacrifices have been, I guess for lack of a better word, illegal in Westeros for thousands of years, which has caused the green seers to become a shadow of what they were, which inevitably caused them to lose control of the trees they made into warriors, the White Walkers. The trees are, however, important. Blood Raven says they root and grow and die in one place, and the river does not move them. The oak is the acorn, the acorn is the oak, and the weirwood. A thousand human years are a moment to a weirwood, and through such gates you and I may gaze into the past. The ghost of High Heart says, This place belongs to the old gods still. They linger here as I do, shrunken and feeble but not yet dead. Nor do they love the flames, for the oak recalls the acorn, the acorn dreams the oak, 
The stump lives in them both. And they remember when the first men came with fire in their fist. So what's up with this acorn reference from two known green seers? We have two red-eyed green seers referencing oak and acorns when it comes to the old gods or the weirwoods. Well, in Celtic mythology or Druidism, the acorn has a deep and rich symbolism. The acorn as a seed is represented as having unlimited growing potential. It is believed the acorn in its dormant state symbolizes that even the trees need rest. One acorn can grow into a massive oak and seed a whole forest. The roots of a tree can twist and turn under the ground further than any eye can see. And they lie there, old and withered, but they remember and they're waiting for Brandon Stark to wake them up. I got a little carried away with this video, so I decided to break it into two parts. Part two will be solely about the Green Seers and the Children of the Forest. Also, as I said earlier, this video is brought to you by Audible. If you haven't read any books or you're not just a big reader, I got you. I have a link below for a 30-day free trial of Audible, and when you use my link, you'll get your first book free. Audible is basically a monthly subscription service of audiobooks. I'm currently listening to Storm of Swords and have been for the last couple of days. I'm completely addicted. Cleaning, working, bathtub, gym, whatever. I'm all about it. The link will be in the description box if you want to try Audible. But guys, let me know what you think about these trees. Are they good or demonic? Will Bran have to make human sacrifices to the trees to wake them up? The weirwoods are one of my favorite parts of the story. I just love them. Okay, guys, like this video if you like it. Thanks for watching. You can connect with me on these social medias. Click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can become a sweet summer child. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.